So today's video is about photography and Nisha, you are by trade a photographer, correct? Correct. Okay, so what I want you to do is in the little introduction bit we do, is put your favourite photo you've ever taken. <laughs> Success in the creative field is, by the amorphous nature of art itself, hard to define. However, I think most people watching this would agree that hard numbers is quite a good way of determining success in the creative world. In which case, it can be argued that one of the most successful photographers of this century is a guy who near exclusively takes photos of video game consoles. So who is this man who takes pictures of video game consoles? That is a guy called Evan Amos, a unsung large penis hero of the internet who has dedicated a not insignificant amount of his time to taking exceptionally high quality photos of every video game console in existence. And for anyone who is curious, this noblest of missions began in 2010 and it's still not finished because Amos is a perfectionist who insists upon documenting every curve and angle of every forgotten relic of gaming history. I'm sure there's only so many pictures you can take of, you know, every angle. There is. And if you take a picture, like, say, a PS2, that's easy enough. But like I said, Amos wants to take a picture of every single gaming console in history. And some of them are so obscure that there are only a couple of, like, you know, high quality specimens in existence in the world. So tracking them down and getting a good quality photo of them is no easy feat. And I think the reason that he does it is because he said, well, gaming is like, it's so ubiquitous today, but it's history is actively being lost in our time because some of these early like, examples of like, you know, gaming consoles and technology are just lost and forgotten and no one thinks about them. And they should be documented because they are an important part of one of like, you know, the fundamental pillars of entertainment today. And that to me is like super noble and also, not something I want to do because I, I didn't realise I researched this. There's a lot of old obscure gaming consoles because I thought I knew about all the obscure pieces of bullshit companies tried to release before, like, you know, Nintendo, Sony, and then later Microsoft just dominated the marketplace and just released a rectangle every year for people to buy. It's like, I didn't reckon, I thought some were fake. So, in that vein, what is the earliest or most obscure piece of like gaming technology you can remember using? See, I, I don't know if I know any obscure ones. I know all the classics, you know, like the arcade like games and stuff like that. My first console was a PlayStation 1. PlayStation 1, so oh man. I... Ours was an Atari 2600. And you knew that was high tech, so it had wood on it. Nothing, nothing says future like wood. Nothing to me says technology like wood. It's had a panel finish, it was great. And it had one button on it. It's like one button and a little joystick, it was great. We had PlayStation 1, and, but we had a chipped PlayStation. Oh, everyone had a chipped PlayStation. <laughs> like, I think um, I own like, most of the major ones now because when I got to be an adult and I started earning money from writing, I went, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to spend this money on traveling or seeing the world or you know enjoying myself. I'm going to spend it collecting all the shit I had to sell as a kid to buy the new thing. Yeah. Like, when I sold my PS1 to buy my PS2 and my PS2 to get my Xbox, I went, no, fuck that. So I spent what I would consider an embarrassing amount of money trying to track down all the old consoles from my youth that I now don't play, just because I was annoyed that they were either sold by my parents or myself. Because I think for me, the thing I'm most annoyed about, like no longer having, is the Nintendo Super Scope, yeah. which we had as kids, and then my dad threw away I like, literally put it in like a skip and got rid of it because he didn't think it was worth anything. Yeah. And I just came out, Dad, do you know that's worth like 80 odd quid because we had the box for it? I was like, huh? I didn't know that. Like, yeah, Dad, like, I would have had that because I would have had it as a conversation style. I would have had it on the wall of this office because like, what a good conversation. Like, what's that? It's a Nintendo Super Scope. It's like, you know, a bazooka you shot your TV with that you could play like Yoshi's Island Adventure or some shit on it. Well, we had, um, for the PlayStation, we had the guns you could use for like Time Crisis. Did you ever do the thing where you plugged in two at once? You'd be like, pew, 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 pew. I, I can't to, remember. I used to do that shit all the time. Yeah. Right, so bringing it back to Amos, mm -hmm. you said the main reason for him taking so many pictures of these consoles was yes. to like preserve it. Like the gaming history, yeah, yeah. like the gaming history and all that. Is there another reason though? Yeah, <laughs> this is what my favorite part about it is like he's motivated primarily by annoyance. Because according to him, he was like looking at the Wikipedia page for like a PlayStation 2. And the photo on the top was like so bad. He went, oh, fuck, that's so bad. This is like the most famous, like, you know, gaming console to ever exist. Why is the photo on Wikipedia so shit? So he dug out like his old PS2 and took like a professional grade photo of his equipment and uploaded that. And after that, he kind of got addicted to, like, you know, doing the same thing for other Wikipedia pages for other gaming consoles. 
And like, while he has mostly focused on like, you know, gaming consoles and accessories and pieces of technology, I think he's also taken photos of like vinyl records and um, like cassette tapes, and I think candy bars, which is good, I guess, but also something that I would argue needs to exist even if people don't realize it. Because yeah. is it you who told me you've got like a, is it Alami? Is that a thing? Alami, yeah. That's yeah, the, the stock image site. And was it you who told me that one of the people who made the most money on it just took pictures of rubbish? Yeah, it's like rubbish or bins or something. It was just something you wouldn't think to take pictures yeah, of. Yeah, so you just want to explain that people might know what a like, um, Alami is it? I think is. it's either Alami or Alami, I'm not sure. Whatever, yeah. But it's basically a, a, a website you can upload pictures to to sell them so like stock photos yeah it's a stock image website that anyone yeah. contribute to so i've i've uploaded like landscape pictures pictures of my cats because i don't mind them being used in like you know textbooks yeah. or no. advertising no. Stuff like so when google's cats they get a picture of a cat yeah and you were telling me and i think this guy's a hero because he noticed a niche that was missing was well there's no pictures of like rubbish or like you know a, a crumpled can of coke so he went out and just took hundreds of photos of like crumpled wrappers or just bits of garbage mm. and then uploaded them to there so whenever anybody was looking for a stock image of like you know crushed coke can on beach they'd find his and that to me is genius because it's something that's needed but no one knew that it was and that specificness is one of the things i like about stock image websites in general and nisha i'm assuming as someone who spent a lot of time on the internet and as you stock image sites you are aware of just the weird trends that seem to exist in stock images yeah yeah and what's your favorite one of them it's like when you when you google like woman eating salad <laughs> that's and the one i was hoping look, you'd say okay really happy okay. <laughs> people don't know what we're talking about there will be plenty of examples behind me as i speak i'm sure but for some reason every woman eating a salad in a stock image is having the time of her fucking life I think my favourite is businessman with arms crossed because that sounds like a fairly like you know generic search term, but the reason I like it is because you can add any specific trait you want to that businessman and there will be a stock photo of it. So for example, if I wanted a picture of say a businessman with his arms crossed who is smiling and is also black, that will probably be on there. Or on the other hand, maybe there's a businessman who's looking across at him and he's not very happy, so he's a frowning businessman, but he might be Asian. And you, like, you could do something that's so good. Like, this is the idea is that you can always just add that extra, you can always clarify what race you want your businessman to be and how, what feeling you want him to have. It's well, so good. Reminds me of an image I searched for recently for a Photoshop I did for a previous video. Oh, okay. We wanted an image of Sylvester Stallone looking sad. So I just typed in sad, sad Stallone. Sylvester. And did it come up? Yeah. Of course it fucking did. This is the internet. I love that shit. It's so good. And uh, like, yeah, just like anyone out there who wants to laugh, just go to a stock image site and just type in a specific a thing as you want and you will find it. It's so good. If you type in black and white cat sat on top of a bin, you'll probably find a picture of and if, cat. And if that doesn't exist, go take that photo with a decent camera setup, and chances are you might make some money off it because someone somewhere might have the same fucking idea. And that is the rationale that Amos had that there's clearly a demand for this sort of thing out there, but no one's fulfilling it. So he decided to take it upon himself to take as many photos as he could of every piece of video gaming technology to have ever existed. And as I mentioned, some of the stuff he wants to take photos of is so obscure that it's basically impossible to get your hands on. So he's had like a Kickstarter or something like that, yeah. which was like, you know, quite happily funded so he could go and like, you know, continue his journey. Knowing all that, that's pretty cool. How does it make him like so popular? Guessing the audience having a similar thought where, yes, Carl, this Amos guy clearly has a vagina decimating penis and he's a super cool, awesome guy. But how does that make him popular? Well, if you go and search for like, any gaming console that springs to mind, say like a PS2, and go onto Google Image Search and click the first image, chances are it will be a picture that Amos took. And again, you're probably thinking, well, what's the big deal here? Well, if you scroll down just a little bit more below the part which says it was a photo by Evan Amos, you'll see a little disclaimer that reads, like, you know, thusly. If anyone can't read that, the Cliff Notes version is, every photo Amos has ever taken is released into the public domain, which basically means it is freely available for anybody, anywhere, on the earth to use for any purpose they desire without paying him. And that's the important part because say for example you want to put a picture of a PlayStation 2 in an article or a book or like, you know use it as like you know background of a TV show or something like that. You're gonna search for it and you're gonna use his image because it's one it's high quality and two it's free. But the problem is because they're in the public domain you don't technically have to credit Amos so nobody ever does. So no one knows who the fuck he is despite by his own admission 
his image has been viewed millions of times and appearing in thousands of different kinds of media, including video games. Because sometimes they use stock images of like video game consoles in other video games, which means that he is arguably one of the most prolific, successful photographers of the 21st century. So I kind of feel bad for the guy. He's, you know, done all these photographs and contributed to all this social media and games yeah. and stuff like that, Just but no one knows who the fuck who he is. is. Yeah, like this massive contribution to, like, you know, the history of video games, culture as a whole, and media, because obviously he's allowing anybody anywhere, including commercial entities, to use the images for free. But don't feel bad for him, because Amos has said, like, while it is a bit annoying that I don't get credited, I, I'm just happy that my work's out there and that it's being seen and that you know, the history of a medium that I love is being preserved and will likely now be preserved forever due to the sheer amount of, like, you know, other forms of media that my work has been included in. And you know what? That's something I deeply respect and would like to give the guy a big, huge thumbs up for because that's a noble ass goal. So everyone watching this video already knows what your favourite image you've ever taken is because obviously they started at the beginning of the video, but I don't because obviously we're recording this and you didn't tell me. So what was it? Out of curiosity. It's obviously... Give me a picture of my one of my cats. Okay. And what do you think the best photo is? What's going to be the one that was at the start of this video? You think it can obviously it can be it can change from like now until then. But I'll probably look through my pictures and it might change. But the one that's coming to my head at the minute is well, post it behind me anyway, just so yeah. people know if it's not. So yeah, the one I'm thinking of at the minute is you know, I just got like a proper DSLR, so I was like messing about with it. Uh, messing with the shutter speeds and stuff. One of my cats was in the room and I had like had some donuts. You see my hand, I've thrown a bit of the donut in the air mm -hmm. and my cat is like looking at it like that. <laughs> I've got a similar photo and I can't share it because will be annoyed. But uh, when I went traveling a couple of years ago, before I went on holiday, um, I was talking to my mum and she was like, as a, she was telling, oh, Carl, where are you going first? I went, oh, I think we're going to Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. She was, you better not do anything naughty. I went, oh, yeah, mum. We're going to, we're going to be shagging prostitutes and doing drugs. And you better not, Carl. And I said, I took a photo. And it's my mum, it's my mum mid yelling at me. So I'll put the photo behind me because she'll be annoyed if she watches these videos. But I'll sh show you afterwards. It's just her yelling at me. And that was at the start of my album. So whenever I was thinking about doing something stupid while I was away in Europe, I'd scroll to that photo and go, well, my mum won't be happy. I don't want to look at that every time I go home and have my mum yelling at me. I better not do it. <laughs> So I'll mention like probably the best photo of me. It was taken quite recently when I was in uh, Japan. Yeah, go me. Like channel's doing quite well. Um, and I got like one of those new iPhone things. Again, channel's doing quite well. And it has like portrait mode on it. And I didn't know this was a thing. Mm -hmm. And the portrait mode is like the special mode that just makes you look better than you do in real life. And I got a photo taken of me just sat just on a wall and I look like a stock photo. <laughs> and I'm actually, I think I'm wearing like an... Uh, the t-shirt has the lyrics to Africa on it, so it's like it's doubly hilarious to me. But it's just me sat on a wall smiling, and I just captioned it, I am stock photo, man. You should upload it to Alan Me. But the, some of the funniest ones I've taken are just the stupid ones, like one of my mum. Yeah. Which is just like midway through yelling at me, like, click. It's like, <laughs> no, don't put that photo up, Carl, it's so bad. <laughs> I've, I've quite a few online, like not publicly, but um, a few that my one of my best friends, she has a habit of taking pictures of me mid-talking and all that. Oh man, yeah. So many. We've... I look horrendous. I love those photos though. There's so many of me just looking absolutely horrendous. So to counteract the photo of me like, you know, looking like, you know, immaculately lit and like, you know, super photogenic, I just like, I'm going to put a really bad one. I'll send you one when you edit this video, like from that same trip of me just like all sweaty because I kept sweating so much in all my photos. I'm trying to like cover the sweat patch on me. <laughs> So I try to call it like, you know, a classic thumbs up pose or some shit like that.